How's it going, guys? Welcome to another episode of Trailmakers Creations by That Dom Guy. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to build a basic plane. Now again, there's a lot of different ways to build planes, a lot of different ways you can start, a lot of different ways you can add things to make things fly in this game. That's the beauty of it. There is no one specific way to do anything. But I'll show you a couple of different basic rules with the physics in the game, and then you can just experiment from there and see what you can come up with. So, the most aerodynamic seat to use for anything flying, as far as jets or planes, that kind of thing, is probably your jet cockpit. So we'll bring one of those up onto the screen here. We'll put that into the world. We're going to come onto the lift and drag tab, and we want to select some... I'm going to go with, some, well, let's go with some uh, medium aerofoils, medium tail fins. So these again, the easiest way, here let me show you a simple way to build the easiest plane that you can build. And it will fly. The physics in the game will allow it. Come to our propulsion here, grab a couple of dragon engines. Now we want to put these on facing sideways so that we have connection points on the outside and on the body. You'll notice there's no connection points on the top. So you can either have it that way or if you don't need anything connected on the outside, you can always have it rotated so that it's all connected on the inside. But using it this way, at least you can connect something on the outside. So we'll have that connected. We'll come over to this side, copy that, bring that over this way. Now, as far as steering, unless you want to put something on the back here, as far as let's go into our mechanics and grab a large hinge, pop that on the back. Now with it selected, we want to look which way the green is going. If the tail fin bends that way, then it's going to turn us over to the left. So we're going to come here up to configure, come to our green arrow here, we want to change that to A, change that to D. So A and D will swing our tail fin. Speed we want to set to, let's set it to 0 0.1. And our angle we can keep at 30, that should be fine. So we can deselect that, and then we'll come down to our lift and drag section again here. And uh, let's grab. Actually, yeah, we can go with the small tail fin. Let's go with two of these. Just rotate them around so that we have our connection points facing forward. Drop that down like that. It doesn't matter if they're facing down or, I mean, you can have them facing this way as well. Like that. So we'll spawn that into the world and just check our controls real quick. We'll get in there. That turns that way. That turns that way. See, that's a little bit slow, so maybe we will uh, increase the speed of that hinge. Configure. We'll go from 0 0.1. Let's go to 0 0.5. Build that again, jump into the seat. There we go, that's a little faster. Now the only thing really, again, aerodynamics is especially a big issue with uh, things that are flying, <clears throat> speed-wise. So we wanna put something on the front here. Now a great way for steering to control yaw or roll will be uh, to put a servo on the front. Now we can set the servo to spin fully. The angle can be a full 360. You want to click hold position so that it stays and doesn't try and rotate all the way back to its original default position. Speed we can set at maximum, which is only two. And we want to make sure that because this is a torque spin, it's going to be the opposite of the direction that it's spinning. So the green spinning in the, let's see if we look at it from the front, you can see green is spinning clockwise, which means it's going to want to turn us counterclockwise. So, to rotate counterclockwise, we're going to go with the A key. Nope, sorry, D, which is going to spin us the opposite direction. That could stay as A. We have our 360 and our 2 for speed. And then on the front of that, we'll simply come down to the tubes, come right down to the end, and you have your cones here on the end. We'll just grab a large cone for aerodynamics purposes. 
check our aerodynamics tab, we can see everything is green. Green for go. So let's build this in and uh, try and take off, see what happens. So we already have, naturally by default, your thrusters are going to be set to your spacebar. And uh, so let's see what happens when we hold down the spacebar. We'll pull up using the seat controls. Come on. Uh, oh, right on. Try that again. Or we don't have any uh, any lift for uh, any control services for lift. So uh, right now we're basically just relying on the seat controls. But as you can see, this will fly just by with the seat controls gives you enough lift. And you got like a mini jet, so the turning will turn. As you can see, the servo in the front is a little herky jerky just because there's no vertical stabilizers. As you can see, almost 300 miles an hour. Not a lot, a uh, lift. <clears throat> All right, let's spawn back our original point, and let's see what we can do to make this a little more controllable, a little more plane-like. So what we can do is we can add some control surfaces that rotate. So again, we'll click anywhere in an open spot, click and drag over these three items here, our two tail fins and our large hinge. And we'll use our a key, WASD, remember, relationship to your camera. We'll move that back a bit, deselect it, and we're going to extend the body out a bit here so that we can have some wings in the back as well. So we'll come down to our frame pieces. I usually go with the 2x4. Keep that on the upper side like that. That should be enough room for us to add some wings. Now again, here you can go with a uh, either just these tail fins, or you can go with the actual wing pieces themselves. The small wings don't actually give very much lift at all, so if you got a super small creation, maybe some small wings, uh, try and use them as helicopter blades, that might work as well, but uh, not a lot of lift there. So the modular wing, the normal sized wing, yeah, gives you a decent amount of lift. So what we're going to do here, or another option again, uh, is to use a servo and then just use more of these tail fins. So let's just try that first. So we'll drop a couple of servos on here, one on either side, one on that side, copy it across to this side. Now, so with these, we copy this back and put it up against our servo here. Copy one of these over to this side. And we might as well copy a couple of these small tail fins. We'll rotate them forward. And we'll put our tail fins right here. And we can select these three pieces again and just move them forward using the D key. And put them out the butt end of the jet there. Now all we need to do is program these two servos to give us our lift. Now because they're in the back, Rotating this wing backwards, tipping it upwards, is going to drive the nose downwards. So you got to remember that you know if we were if they were the wings in the front, tipping them upwards would give us lift upwards. But if we try and tip them up when they're in the back, it's just going to drive the nose down. So we want to do the reverse basically. So if this rotated downwards, which is the green, that's actually going to lift the nose. So we know that green is going to be up for the nose. So we select this, come down here. In the green square, we're going to put S, so that when we pull back, and this is going to be W if that's S, and on the opposite one on the other side, it should be the opposite. As we can see here, the green, if we lift this wing, it's going to drive the nose down, which means red is up, so red would be S, green would be W. So you want to program each, any anytime you have a moving part, you want to program it one at a time. There are some of the uh, options on some of the ish, uh, some of the blocks, like the servos, for example. If you select more than one, say you select them both, go to configure. You're going to see that there's these are blanked out on the bottom here, the green and the red, because they have different controls. But there are some controls that you can apply to both of them that don't have anything to do with the buttons that you keep on to them. So the speed being one, we want to slow that down, or they're going to be rotating really fast. The slowest you can go is 0.1, so that's what we'll take it down to. The angle's 45, that's kind of steep, so we'll just bring that down to 30. And we don't need it to hold position, we want it to reset automatically back to this straight default position if we let go. So then we can select like that, and that'll be fine. 
those attributes will be applied to each one of the servos independently without affecting the button keybinds that we already have going for them. So, we should be able to build this into the world real quick here and have a quick test of our controls. Why is that? Uh, oh, that's the front end. Okay. Down, okay, up. Looks like we need a little more room to net. Let's respawn here. Let's get out. Face a uh, dis away. All right. Let's pull back. Hit our thrusters. Come on. Get up in the air. Now again, these are stabilizing fins. They don't have a lot of lift. So what we'll do next here is I'll show you the difference. I'm using the servo in the front to turn it while it's on the ground. Okay, so let's go back and look at the difference between these and we'll just add wings instead. Well, not instead. Let's actually just move these out by four. Four, one, two, three, four. And we're going to add in that space. We'll just take a wing make sure that we have it facing the right way. Actually, facing forwards or backwards doesn't really matter. still gives you lift in the same direction. But if you have the wing upside down, it will actually push you down. It will still, uh, like, the direction of the wing is uh, is relevant there. So, because we have a wing now which only has two connection points on it, we want to move it back one. We'll move this fin back one. We'll have this selected. We'll come over here and copy it. It's already in line. We'll move this piece back one. And I'll just take a look at the difference between how much lift that's going to give. We want to be facing this way. How much lift that's going to give compared to when we only had these stabilizer fins. So we'll hit the thrust. Pull back. Let's get some speed up here. Pull back. That should lift us off the ground. A lot of ground friction. Go. No. Alright, actually, let's go to the uh, aircraft carrier. That sounds... Logical. I bet you there'll be like a runway that we can take off. There we go. Let's come this way and go. This is only two jets too. As we keep adding components, you gotta remember the weight's gonna keep going up. But this should work fine. Fly off the end here. Pull back, we go up. So that's pretty sharp turning, so we could even lower that 30 degree angle down to a 20 or a 15. Now, the only roll we have is the servo on the front. If you wanted to get rid of that, it's a little bit more complicated. You use the use of a logic block to allow those servos in the back to operate independently as your uh, as your yaw as well. So that is the basics of a plane. You can add another couple jets. Same thing with cars or uh, or boats. From the side, you want to make sure that your thrust is going to be fairly even along your center of gravity. Uh, maybe a little bit below, just so that you have the more a little bit more lift pushing you from underneath, getting you keeping you in the air. And you also want to try and keep your weight centered in the frame of your vehicle. See here, I'm just holding here, and it wants to nose dive. That's because the seat is near the front, and the majority of the weight is where the seat is, and the thrusters on the front. So it's going to naturally want to fall forward. If I were to extend the front out a little bit and add some more weight out the front, believe it or not, that would put the seat more in the middle of the frame and would actually stabilize the entire thing. So let's go and try that. We'll hit backspace. We'll just add a little bit more out front. Or you can also move the seat to the back. See, if you were to select this block here and delete it, select the seat, move it back. All you need to do is add another couple of small cubes under here. One two. Everything's connected back there. Have one of these selected. Bring it up to the front. One or two of those. Now, these are not connected down here because we have this gap, so we can just select these two things. Copy them downwards this way. That gap is now filled. And let's see how much of a difference that makes. Speed up here. Pull back. You see how much more smooth it is rather than really herky-jerky when I'm pulling back on the on the stick. Oh, it's still pretty sharp. It's got a short, short base frame, so 
you're going to have a lot of uh, really jerky motions simply because it's, uh, you know, the angle's still at 30 as well. We didn't change that either, right? Those are a couple of basics for building a plane. And then just fool around with that design. Put another thruster on the bottom and see how it flies. It'll push from the bottom a lot more so you'll find your craft going up. And, you know, move things back and forth. One, one block, two blocks. Maybe move those thrusters back a block or two. Uh, just so you don't have so much weight in the front end. Or you can probably even get rid of that servo off the front end. And just use the, the hinge in the back. See how that steers. Or you can put a servo underneath your vertical fins in the back here, and then use that for your roll and your, your yaw. So small things like that is all you need to really look for, your balance, your thrust. As long as you've got a, enough speed to get up over 80, 90 miles an hour, you should have enough speed to get off the ground. Those controls are there. Uh, that should give you a lift. And a small vehicle, you can still use the roll in the seat. Or you can use the servo like that itself. So that's the basics of a plane. Uh, yeah, I think we'll leave that one there. Uh, again, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Uh, any suggestions for future builds or things you'd like to see, let me know down in the comment section. And we will see you guys in the next one.